So here is one instruction executing in a single cycle. And now I've decomposed that one task into three different circuits, right? Circuit A, B, and C. You know, just for the sake of example, let's say this is instruction memory, this is, you know, ALU, this is data memory. Okay, and so as an instruction goes from the instruction memory stage to the ALU stage, the instruction memory stage can start processing instruction number two. So this is instruction one going through the three different stages. This is instruction two going through the three different stages and so on. So by the time you get to cycle three, you can see that there are three different instructions in my pipeline. There is instruction number three, which is going through the instruction memory stage. There is instruction number two that's going through the ALU stage. And there's instruction one that's going through the data memory stage, right? So these are three different instructions all being processed at the same time. And the way we can do this parallel processing is by decomposing the circuit into three different sub-circuits. And each of these sub-circuits is now handling a different instruction. Okay, and so now if you look at how long it takes to get, get a task done, over here it maybe took 1000 picoseconds to finish one instruction. So my throughput was one instruction finishing every 1000 picoseconds, which is basically 1 billion instructions per second. Down here, my throughput is going to be 3x higher based on the card analogy that you saw before. Right now, each of these stages takes 333 picoseconds, roughly. Okay, so I've taken that one large task, broken it up into three different tasks, and they should each take roughly the same amount of time. And so you have an instruction completing here, an instruction completing here, and here, and so on. So the gap between consecutive instructions finishing is 333 picoseconds. So the throughput is now 3 billion instructions per second, right? So the throughput has gone up by a factor of 3x. The latency for one instruction has really not changed. It still takes roughly 1,000 picoseconds to finish one instruction. Now, what about CPI, right? So CPI over here is one because every single cycle, one instruction finishes, right? So on average, it takes a million cycles to finish a million instructions. How about over here? CPI here is also one, right? Because this represents one clock tick, right? So this is one, this is one rising clock edge. This is the next rising clock edge and so on. And so at every rising clock edge, there is one new instruction that is rolling out of this pipeline. So the cycles per instruction is still one, right? Which is kind of counterintuitive because we said that the throughput in the lower example is higher, right? So the reason that CPI is the same is because the notion of a cycle is different in these two cases. Right? So there's one instruction every cycle, but one cycle is this really large window. Right, One cycle is now 1,000 picoseconds. Here as well, there's one instruction finishing every cycle, but one cycle is now three times smaller. Right, It's only 333 picoseconds. Okay, So in terms of CPI, both of these designs are the same, but the throughput is higher because your clock speed has essentially gone up. Okay, So now let's answer these few questions over here. So does it take longer to finish each individual job? In what we've discussed so far, both the jobs take the same amount of time, right? 1,000 picoseconds in one case, and then you know going through three stages is also roughly 1,000 picoseconds. Does it take shorter to finish a series of jobs after having done pipelining? Yes. Previously, if you were trying to finish a million instructions, or if you were trying to finish a billion instructions, you would need a second. Now you can finish a billion instructions in one third of a second, right? Because my throughput has increased by using a three-stage pipeline. Now, what assumptions did we make while answering these questions, right? So there were two main assumptions that we made, which I didn't quite spell out. One is that by breaking up the instruction into these three stages and by executing multiple instructions back to back to back, we are assuming that there is no dependence between these instructions, okay? So we said that instruction one is doing something here, instruction two is doing something here, instruction three is doing something here. Now, if these instructions needed a value being produced by the first instruction, you may not have been able to perform your task in stage B or stage A over here. And that's referred to as a dependence, where one instruction actually needs the value being produced by an earlier one. And if that value has not been produced, that later instruction may have to wait, in which case you can't build the idealized pipeline that I built in this example. That means that between two instructions finishing, there's going to be a gap where nothing got done. And that's referred to as a stall. 
So every time you have a stall, the average CPI starts to increase. Okay, so in what I've described so far, we had this idealized notion where there were no dependences between instructions. And if you have dependences, then because CPI reduces, the throughput increase is not going to be this idealized 3x. So that's one assumption we made. And as we go through the videos, we will kind of relax this assumption as well. The second assumption we made is that there is no overhead from a latch. Okay, so going back a few slides, we had seen that if you're just trying to do everything in a single cycle, you don't need to introduce too many latches. But if you're trying to break things into a five-stage pipeline, then I need five latches. I need a latch that separates every pair of stages. And these latches don't come for free, right? They consume energy, they consume latency. And so once you start adding latch overhead, it takes longer to finish an instruction if you have to keep going back and forth between latches. Okay, so if you assume latch overhead, this three-stage pipeline would not take 1,000 picoseconds. It would also take, you know, plus, say, 50 picoseconds to latch the first result, another 50 picoseconds to latch the second result, and so on, right? So it does take longer to finish each individual job, also consumes more energy, right? So that's something that we've kind of idealized so far. Now let's answer this third, this fourth question here about, you know, is it better to build a 10-stage pipeline, right? Or is a five-stage pipeline better? So we've seen that you know, going to a three-stage pipeline should give me a throughput of 3x. Five-stage pipeline should give me a throughput increase of 5x. Ten-stage pipeline should give me a throughput increase of 10x. Right? So it should keep getting better. Now it turns out that performance does increase early as you increase the number of stages. But after a while, that benefit starts to taper off. And that's because the latch overhead starts to dominate. And a second reason is this, is this thing about dependencies. If you try to do 20 instructions all in parallel, there's a pretty good chance that there will be dependencies between these instructions, which means the later instructions have to wait for the earlier instructions to finish. So if you're doing a few instructions in parallel, yes, you get some benefit, but adding more instructions does not necessarily mean that you can do more things in parallel. Okay, so if you draw a graph where on the x-axis you put the number of stages, on the y-axis you put performance, as you increase the number of pipeline stages, performance goes up quite a bit, then starts to taper off, and then eventually falls. Okay, so we have not yet talked about why it falls. That will be made clear once we talk about data dependencies and control dependencies later. Okay, but it's good to know that initially pipelining does help quite a bit, and you get optimal performance between 20 to 30 stages. Okay, so if you're trying to optimize for performance, you will typically build a processor pipeline that has between 20 to 30 pipeline stages. In terms of power versus the number of stages, you'll see that this graph is a little less forgiving. As you add more stages, the power consumption keeps on increasing. And that's because of the overhead introduced by having to latch results after every single pipeline stage. Okay, so now let's answer a few more questions and then we'll move on to designing a five-stage pipeline for our processor. Okay, so let's just look at the quantitative effects. This is kind of summarizing what we've just discussed. So because of pipelining, the time it takes in nanoseconds to execute one instruction goes up, right? This is because of the latch overhead. A single instruction is going to take three cycles to finish in that three-stage example I showed you before. Okay, so a three-stage pipeline means I'm going to take three cycles to finish one instruction. If I have a 10-stage pipeline, it's going to take me 10 cycles to finish one instruction. But if you look at average CPI, that remains roughly the same. That's going to be close to one. That's because even though one instruction is taking more stages, I'm doing more instructions in parallel. So if you give me a million cycles, there's a pretty good chance that I'll finish close to a million instructions in that time. Okay, so average CPI over a large number of instructions is still going to be roughly the same. Clock speed has gone up, right? Previously, I had to introduce a rising clock edge between an instruction starting and the next instruction starting. Now the gap between two instructions starting has, has reduced and so the clock speed has now gone up. The total execution time goes down and this is because I have higher throughput. So if I have a given amount of instructions I need to finish, I'm going to take a lot less time. Okay, and so under ideal conditions, that is no data dependencies, no latch overhead, the speed up is a function of the number of stages that I have, right? So the number of pipeline stages is my speed up. That is my increase in clock speed, right? So a five-stage pipeline should ideally give me 
speed up of 5x.